Cooking with Friends and Family with your host, Billy Charles. All right, I'm here today with a good friend of mine, Jerry Millard, and he's been telling me about this stew that he's been making for years. And I wanted Jerry to give us the ingredient by ingredient on how he puts together this wonderful stew. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to brown the stew meat. We're using two pounds for this. We're using two tablespoons of olive oil, and we're just going to brown it for about three minutes. That's all we're going to do. Separate our chunks. You can buy this at Publix under the form of uh, stew meat. I think sometimes they also um, uh, make it from uh, from top round. It's all I've tried either way, and it's it's pretty good. So when you're cooking stew or Mexican food, like if you go out to a Mexican restaurant and you're eating burritos and you ask for shredded beef, usually the kind of beef you're going to get is a, is a cheaper cut of beef. It's not, a, it's not the part that's coming out of a New York strip or a Kansas City strip or a, a, a T-bone. It's going to be uh, top round. <clears throat> um, it's it's going to be cheaper cuts of the, uh, of the beef. It's going to actually just be really tough. If you put it on the grill and just grilled it up, you'd be chewing on it for hours. If you make it with stew and you cook it for six and seven hours, it is actually really tasty and the toughness goes away by cooking it over a long period of time. But it's nothing you'd want to just throw on the grill. You'd be, you'd be chomping on it like, uh, like tree bark. All right, so we're just going to start getting this browned up a little bit here. This is just just browned in olive oil. Get it going here in a minute. So we're not trying to really cook this, we're just trying to brown it. We just want to get the red off the edges completely. And that's browned enough because it's going to cook for quite some time. So we're just trying to get the outer edges browned. Next step is to throw all this into the crock pot. It's going to be part of our stock and gravy. And then uh, we're going to prepare the onions and the carrots and the garlic and get that all cleaned up and ready to go into the crock pot next. Put all the contents right into the crock pot with the juices and the olive oil, which is only a little bit. And that's going to be the start. Now we're going to prepare the veggies and the broth and everything else to get in there. So the recipe calls for three cloves of garlic. I'm using probably three and a little bit better just because I like garlic. And we're going to press it right into the uh, crock pot. Garlic press makes it easy. Garlic's already peeled. Popping it in. Squeezing it in. Then of course you gotta clean it out each time. So one of the things when I, um, you know, my mom used to cook a lot and I used to watch her. And she taught me how to make tomato sauce. And when she died, I was really craving the beef stew. And that's one thing she never taught me. So one day I looked up the, uh, the beef stew recipe on the internet and I just started reading the ingredients and I went, yeah, that, that sounds like what she used to do. At the end of this uh, recipe, which is here on the refrigerator, and of course being a, a bachelor and not knowing this, at the very end of this recipe, after you get your beef, your beef broth and your, your water and your vegetables into the, into the stew, I always went, well, how do they get this you know, stuff to be thick? So at the end of this recipe, you add like a half a cup of all-purpose flour, and all of a sudden, your just watery, soupy mix becomes real nice and thick and gravy-like. Never knew it, never had any idea, never had any idea that she actually just used a little flour. You can also use uh, cornstarch at the end and uh, thicken up your, your broth, but just something I never knew until I started making this and I was like, oh my God, this works great. When we're cutting onions for stew, I don't cut them like I'm doing tomato sauce if I'm cutting onions for tomato sauce, I'm cutting them up to where they're just like water. Here we're keeping some pretty good pieces in the stew. So, and we're using the sweet onions. Vidalia. Mm -hmm. 
That's about right. Maybe a little more. Let's get the onions off the board, and I'll go back to the potatoes. This is one whole onion for two pounds of stew meat. Cutting some pretty nice chunks. Sometimes as I go, I'll find my chunks are too big. As I'm cooking, I'll slice them when I'm stirring. It looks like we got about enough potatoes in there. I like the carrots to be kind of sizable. People forget that carrots are real sweet. After five or six hours of chopping them, they just release a lot of sugar. I use them in my tomato sauce. People think I'm crazy, but a lot of French cooking uses carrots. Of course, I, I do it real fine in tomato sauce. You would never know unless I told you if they're in the sauce. Here, we're chopping them pretty big. That's about the right amount to bread that there. That's probably like four decent sized carrots. Um, one thing I forgot, we're gonna add some peas today. I didn't put it in the recipe the last time. I would say that's about enough. Half a bag for two pounds. This recipe calls for three cups of beef broth. For every cup, you can use some regular beef bouillon. I'm just using basic sodium-free beef bouillon. And I'm just mixing it with one cup of water. And we're throwing it right in there. Doing this three times, maybe three and a half. You can also just, just put your water in, throw your beef bouillon in, it's all going to get mixed together. I'm going to mix this up just a little bit to kind of see where we're heading because I might want to go an extra, uh, an extra cup of broth. Of course once the potatoes and the carrots and the peas and the onions start releasing a little water and you lid having on here and getting some condensation this is all going to get pretty watery now we're going to start adding our spices but i was interested uh when i when i saw this recipe because i'm making italian food all the time it called for two tablespoons of uh, tomato paste which i thought eh, that's pretty interesting tomato paste definitely is a great thickener it adds to the taste so i'm sure it works great on this stew so we're just adding it Two tablespoons, of course, I'm not really judging it like uh, I'm probably using a, a little bit more than two tablespoons, but we're pretty close and it's gonna be fine. One tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. Once again, on this, if, if you go a little over, it's not gonna hurt this. So, let's see, so one tablespoon here. All right, so tablespoon, we got dried thyme. So where's our, where's our thyme here? This ain't working real well, so I'm eyeballing that. <laughs> we got caraway seeds, which is optional, but uh, I thought it really um, added some taste to it. Teaspoon of caraway. Okay, it calls for three bay leaves. We should be in the bay leaf business because uh, I think a bottle like this is like $11 or $10. It's kind of like crack cocaine. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> but it does add to it. Two tablespoons. Fresh parsley. Two tablespoons. So big ones. Parsley. All right. So that's one. Two. Little bit for good measure. We are doing a teaspoon of rosemary. The last is a teaspoon of smoked paprika. I'm putting a little bit more in on that. And I think that's everything. So now we're really pretty much ready. We're going to start letting this sit for a while and heat up. We're going to low cook this. Um, in fact, what I do is actually, I start it on high just to get it rolling for about an hour. And then I, uh, I put it down to slow. 
if you're if you're fast cooking it in a crock pot you can go for three and a half to four hours if you're slow cooking it you're about seven hours cook time at the six and a half hour point is when you add your flour to thicken up your broth because this broth is going to be very watery but as this cook cooks you'll you'll see more broth being created just from the vegetables last but not least the uh, recipe doesn't call for this but I just start I don't know that something about Montreal seasoning that I really like it's got salt it's got spices it's got pepper so it kind of takes the, the place of putting the salt and pepper in it um, I really just eyeball it I kind of put it into the palm of my hands I just make sure I don't have too much that's probably not enough so I'm gonna go one more time that's just about right all right that's it I'm gonna stir it one more time and then we are done I think this batch is gonna come out good got nice chunks of potatoes in there nice carrots it's gonna look looks looking pretty good from what I can see if, if you look at it here you're already starting to see as it's mixing you're, you're seeing the, the broth be right about at that point there uh, where when we first started this with the three cups of water it almost seems like it's not enough but as this starts cooking you you create more broth and it, and it really comes out comes out really good so that's what we're gonna do we're gonna let it sit for a while now um, starting it on high just to get it rolling and then after about an hour I'm gonna knock it down to low and I'll cook it low for about five and a half hours. But right at the last point is when I add, uh, I think a half cup or a quarter cup, I'll check, of the uh, flour. So when you see this in six hours, it's gonna look very watery, just like a, like a soupy mix. And once you add that flour, it just boom, all of a sudden, the broth has got, it's like gravy. And then you put it over egg noodles and it's uh, like what mom used to make. So how long has it been cooking now, Jerry? Since 11 o'clock. And right now I have yeah, I, a little after six. Yeah, so I, we're going. I, I technically stopped it at about five o'clock. I cooked it one hour real high, and then for the rest of the day, pretty much just at low. It's looking good, man. It smells wonderful. Too bad we can't get the smell on the video here. Jerry, great job, man. That thing tasted great. Oh my gosh, I can't believe you made that yourself. I thought only women were good cooks. Hey, look up, uh, look up in Paris, France. There's a restaurant called Mollard, M-O-L-L-A-R-D, five star. Sounds good, man. Let's go. All right.